coming out now. Oh, look at that move. Adele's too. Gotta peep the Adele's on. Oh yeah, how you like those? Yeah. It's about 7 a.m. in the morning. I just arrived at the job site and uh, we got a whole bunch of foundations we're gonna be doing today. Azteca Concrete in uh, Fort Mojave, Arizona. I just happened to see these guys pouring, so I just uh, pulled up. They said that I could, uh, you know, film this whole project. But if you look at the foundations, we're gonna be pouring two of these today. Looks like they got about four, four set up. We're gonna actually be doing two, which is gonna be, uh, we're looking at about 80 yards, I would say. And uh, out here, uh, the structural part of it is pretty simple. It looks like, take a look at this. They're using round steel stakes. And uh, we got two half inch rebar number four one top and bottom we've got all round stakes that's what you need out here because it's really rocky ground looks like we got about shoot one foot below grade on the footing and uh this is uh probably only called for one by one it looks like uh it's definitely over that on these footings as far as reinforcement in the slab uh it's fiber mesh out here fiber mesh and big rock that's what gets that's what goes in the concrete out here you have an option wire mesh or fiber in this particular case it's going to be fiber let's go check out the the boom pump here it is here uh austin i just met austin and uh he's got a nice looking rig over here i'm gonna go check it out we'll talk to him a little bit hey austin uh, what kind of rig are you running here? Today we got a uh, 2005 uh, 39 meter swing concrete boom pump. Yeah, what year is it? 2005. 05? It looks like it's in good shape. Yeah. It's real clean, man. Thank you, I appreciate it. What's the most you poured out of here in one day, one setting? Been about six, seven hundred yards out here before. Oh, really? Uh, have you ever had any clogs in it? Once in a while. And what do you do? Uh, where does it usually clog at? Usually, ninety-nine point nine percent of the time, it's in that five to four reducer at the end. Right at the very end. Yep. So what do you do? How do you do? Drop it down to the ground, release the clamps yep. to get it free. That's it. Does it have a lot of back pressure when you pop it? When you pop it open, is there back pressure behind have, it? Usually what you gotta do is take a few strokes in reverse and oh. release the pressure. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, you can reverse it to pull yep. the pressure out. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And then away you go again. Yeah, nice. How big a rock can you run through this? Uh, inch and a half. Oh, wow. Up to inch and a half rock. That is big. What are we doing today? Is this three quarter or something? Yeah, one inch? it should be one inch minus today, probably. Yeah. Usually what they run on these houses. When you get that fiber mesh in the load, uh, does that do anything to your pump at all? It doesn't even affect it one bit. Oh, really? Yeah, I know. I got some pumpers, but they're in, in Southern Cal. They're running the pea gravel. And when I put fiber in the load, they get a little scared. Like, they yeah. don't know what's going to happen. But uh, I don't that's think it affects it at all, personally. Not something with a pump kit like this. Yeah, that's, if it's blowing into the half aggregate. It, it, yeah, it, it gobbles it up. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> true. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, this it is a lot bigger machine than they're running uh, down there for that pea gravel. Yeah. No doubt. All right, uh, we'll catch you in action. All right, let's take a look at some of the equipment we'll be using here. Uh, I just walked over here to the back of the uh, lot This particular company Aztec uh, they did basically this entire track There's still about 50 more foundations to go and I think they've already completed about 150 and you can see the houses way over there They're already built on those foundations that they did but they still have this entire street here in both directions 
and then across the street as well to go but let's look at these tools we got this is uh, about an eight foot eight foot bull float or so oh, maybe not quite but it's long it looks like just you know it's a channel aluminum or magnesium I'm not sure which but let's feel the weight of it oh, yeah it's pretty heavy oh and they even got more weights here this is this is probably the weights right here that they throw on top you know if it if it's a a really dry slump you can throw these on there and really get it flat quick also we got some jitter bugs or tamps knock the rock down and bring up a little cream with those then over here you've got your standard three foot bull float magnesium Sun's starting to come up now. Starting to look real pretty. It rained really hard here yesterday, which is nice for the ground. Great before the pour. But you can see this ground really sucks up the water. He's been wetting this for about a good hour already. Truck should be arriving here shortly. All right, the concrete truck showed up. Let's take a look at what we got here. We got S and S materials. How many how many yards you got on this baby? Got oh yeah, but she'll carry twelve, huh? Uh, or no? Okay. What? If, if we got a pretty slow thing. Oh really? Yeah, that's cool. How's that concrete looking, Austin? Have you checked it out yet? Yeah, we're gonna try to keep it kind of dry for the stem wall. Oh, you're gonna hit the stem wall first. A little tight yeah so it won't run out on them exactly how how what's the lowest slump you can do with this uh, you can pump some chocolate with these oh really it's not the funnest thing to do but yeah yeah you can go stiff then you can probably go with this big half, rock two and a half three inch. yeah that's stiff i wouldn't want to be laying that down <laughs> tell you what that's for sure no, but I don't think anybody wants to lay down a two and a half inch or not. <laughs> Here it comes. Oh, look at all that. That's the primer in there. Let's see where that concrete's going. Look at, take a look up here. It's coming all the way up and over the top. Coming right on down here. Check out that. You got the two by 12 right there deflecting the concrete into the stem wall. That's a good idea. Marcus, um, how many yards you anticipate pouring today? Got about 88 yards today. 88? Nice. It's gonna be a long day, huh? Yeah, not too bad. About three o'clock. Three o'clock? Nice. You're gonna run the power trowel on all this three footer and burn it black? 
No, we won't burn it black. We'll just put a nice finish to a whip finish. Yeah, no, that's what I like. Yeah, run the power trough, bring up the crane, wipe it down with wipe the... Wipe it down and seal it up. And walk away. Yeah. You going to use any curing compound on yeah, there? We use, a, we use a curing compound on everything. Oh, really? Yeah. That's a good idea. Oh, I noticed you got this. You, you use that Meadows curing compound. What is it? The brand Wright Meadows or something like that? I believe so. I think I've seen yeah. it in the back of the truck. That's the same one I use. What is it? The one, the white one? No, it's a clear. It's uh, it actually comes out red. But that's it's what clear. I got. Yeah, it the red one. Red, but it's clear. Yeah, that's the one I just started using. Cause the white they say goes on white, dries clear, but it really doesn't. It stays white forever. Yeah. Have you had? Have you ran into that? We've, we've had the white stuff before, and it just bleaches it almost. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Out here, I'll bet it does it. Um, yeah, it probably bleaches right we out. We had some stuff too in the past years ago that were. They come out oily almost. It was an oil based. They don't here. sell yeah. that anymore, huh? No, they got rid of it. It's almost a hazard. That stuff. Behind my seat. That stuff um, that they used to have, uh, it would burn your skin if you got it on your skin, right? Is that the kind you're talking about? Uh, um, no, I never had the kind that burn my skin. Oh. But I, uh, uh, I always want to wear gloves anyway with it. Yeah, I've had them. Uh, Thank you. Oh, you need some goggles? Yeah, I just have it over there now. Oh, uh, okay. Behind my seat. <laughs> yeah, that's the one thing about the boom pump. It's a lot of splatter, huh? Depends on who's running the fuel, I guess. Oh. Yeah, that, I'm sure that makes a difference. <laughs> the slump probably makes a difference. Yeah, and, it's uh, supposed to be a little bit drier than that. They brought it a little bit wet. It is stacking yeah. up, though. It looks like it's just going to... It takes a little more hand work with the shovel to get it up. Yeah. You won't have to worry about rock pockets, huh? With that slump? No, we tap it really good too when they when they fill it up they're tapping it. That's the one thing that's nice yeah. about when it's like that. You you get a lot of cream on that. We'll strip it later and face it up. Yeah. When you guys are pulling your steel stakes, because you got the round one, um, do you use do you have a stake puller or no? Or, we just use a hammer. You just use a hammer. Just a regular hammer. Uh -huh. I didn't know what, what's a stake puller. They have one that uh, uh, locks on and it has a it has its own and you just push down and it lifts it up. Yeah. Really? Yeah, because it has a base on there, a little base, so it clamps as you push down, it tightens on the stake and it just goes tink right out and out but i do really? you know what else works good um just a pipe wrench yeah you take a pipe wrench every now and then they'll have to use a pipe wrench if the ground's real hard and stuff like this ground up here is real rocky and stuff so it comes right out it'll, this it'll, stuff it'll, huh? yeah because it's not really it's fine. not biting yeah we get some ground down in the valley that's pretty uh it's all that farm filled stuff so oh yeah stuff it's like a on. suction yeah kind of like a suction on it All right, we've already, so we've topped off a little bit of the stem wall. Now we're running an edge on it. What size edge is that? Is that a half inch? Three quarter. Three quarter. Looks like that baby's been around, but you keep it really good condition. Yeah, well, this is somebody else. Oh, is it? Well, whoever it is, they've had it a long time, and they keep uh, detailing it out, it looks like. Yeah. So right in front of their hand edger, you got a hand float going in right here, leveling it up. Then a hand edger right behind them. Any anchors on these? Yeah. Oh, you are? Yeah, oh, really? 
Oh, after you edge, you put yeah. the anchors later? No. After the time you them a little bit. Uh, they'll sink right now, huh? If you put them in right at this point. Yeah, they'll fall down. The bolts will fall down because it's too wet. That damn form almost blew out. Look at her lean. There's not much of this stem wall really above grade after the floor goes in, huh? This is where the electrical panel is going to be going right here. There's your youth for ground. How long you been doing this? My whole life. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 It looks like you, uh, you know how to use the shovel. Yeah. So I figured you've been doing it a while. Long time. Yeah. Your whole life. In other words, you've been in it probably about ten years already or more. Since I was a baby, really. Oh, your dad. My your dad, parents. My dad did it. Oh. Yeah, that's how I did it too. I worked with my dad. Right I started with him. Cool. Same way. Oh yeah. My sons do it now. My every right my whole family. That's good. Are you from California? Or? Yeah. Yeah. I have a vacation house over here. All right. So you see this depressed area right here? That's gonna be floated up with tile. It'll be a walk-in um, bathtub or walk-in shower stall. You know, all sloped to the drain, I guess. Oh, here's another walk-in shower stall over here. Here's your next walk-in shower stall right here. This load's a lot tighter than that first one. A little bit better. A little bit better, yeah. trucks but let's go take a look across the street at what's our this was completed last week here's your front porch this is going to have some nice probably decorative columns of, of some sort but they're using uh, the Arizona walking joiner it looks like here they're nice and wide and big radius on them. Got felt expansion paper all the way around the foundation. So in other words, this slab on the entry of this house, it's not tied into the foundation at all. It's free floating, independent of the foundation because they settle at different rates. You know, because you've got a really thick concrete on your foundation and you've got, you know, just a four inch on your exterior. so. The settlement's going to be different, so you don't want them attached. And that's why, even on this garage floor, now we're in the garage floor here. And you can see all this expansion felt around the perimeter. That way, when they start to shift, you know, independently of one another, and they will at different rates because of the, the way that they're designed. 
this won't affect it. There's your interior stem wall. There's not much of it exposed at all. So even though on the pour that we're doing over there, I noticed that form was blowing out on the stem wall. That's not going to be noticeable at all because there's only, shoot, in the back you've got an inch and a half of the stem exposed. Out here at the front you've got about four and a half inches exposed. So you've got, from, from the rear to the front, you've got a couple inches slope, you know, if you ever do get water inside the garage. So this is your RV bay right here. See how deep that is? Let's take a look at this particular design over here. Pretty much the same, but it's just flip-flopped. Yeah. Uh, the entries the entry is way different. This house is this house appears to be a little bit smaller too. And the entry is uh, down this narrow corridor. It's gonna be right through here and then going into the uh, entry there. Looks like they've already poured some stem walls over here. It's getting ready to do, that's an exterior stem wall on the RV garage side of this particular house. So this house right here, and this one, very similar. Just the, uh, the plan is just reversed. Let's take a look at this stem wall over here. It's already been stripped out and faced. And it looks good. So only the top probably, they finished it way down. But you're really only going to see the top four inches at this end that end you'll see about two inches but it's nice if you finish I guess you know you finish it all the way down button some felt up against there nice and clean here's the steel stakes that have been pulled all the holes are clean in them because they bang them together so all the concrete falls out while it's still wet little underpinning over here we were throwing the dirt up against it, but it's just not really, it's just all rock. So it's hard to move and to uh, backfill with. So they're gonna go ahead and underpin a couple of these areas here. Anchor bolts are going in right now, and these are just some half inch, half inch steel anchor uh, bolts. About 10 inches long. What are those, 10 or 12? They're 10. Oh, 10? 10, 10, 10, yeah. 10 by a half inch. Yeah, 10 inch. That is so much easier than having to pre-hang them. Because then, you know, when you're pre-hung, you gotta work all the car you're going into that narrow spot around those, uh, you know, brackets that hold the bolts in. So this is a much easier system. Let's see if they got the anchor bolts over here yet. Yep, looks like it. Yep, all the anchor bolts, and they look like about uh, four foot spacing here. Let's see what they got, yeah. Here's your anchor bolts here. It looks like they're running almost likely a two by four plate, because it's pretty close to that outside edge. And they're coming about one foot in off the corner on both sides, pretty standard. And then four foot spacing, like I said. Now they're already removing the excess concrete around the perimeter of the form. You can see here, get that concrete away from that form while it's still wet. 
get it flattened out, and then you can just work right over the top later when you do your final grade. Plus your form lumber will come out a lot easier, and then you can reuse it. Because of most of these houses in this track are really um, similar, you just drag these forms right over to the next one and utilize them again. And if you numbered them, you could actually bring them right into the same position on the next model home. So you wouldn't have to do any more measurements, in other words. How many trucks do you got locked in just got for 88, you? 88 locked in right now. Oh, you got 88. Yeah. Yeah, we'll probably bump it up. And another, they're just uh, round load. tripping four four trucks. Is that the four idea? Four trucks is what they can do, do right now. Oh, okay. How busy they are, yeah. yeah, that'll work, huh? Yeah, that's when you get to it's only about twenty minutes from here. Oh yeah. So it's not too bad. When you get to that slab, it'll go a lot slower anyway, probably, than just pumping footings up, huh? Oh, once we get to the slab, it's gonna go really fast. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. How much just on the slab do you figure? That one's called about 30 on top. This one's uh, 20 on top. So it'll take a little more depending on how thick it is along the footings and everything. So this will take one more truck in the footings. Two more on top. That one's got three on top. It's coming along nicely. You got a nice crew here. You work with these guys a lot? Yeah, we've all been together quite some time now. Oh, yeah. that's the way. Yeah. You don't have to talk a lot. They already no, know what they got to do. No, we have the same do. crew, so everyone kind of knows their job, stays busy. And you're pretty much the quarterback then, huh? Yeah, I just got to watch them, otherwise they'll drift away. <laughs> yeah. That's what makes a good team, though. Working together for a long yeah. time and uh, one, one boss, one quarterback running the show. Yeah, you get too many guys talking and it just that, that's when things start going backwards. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, this is our fourth truck, huh? Fourth truck? So, so like yeah. That, yeah. Fourth truck, and now we're on the slab over here. We got, this is like a pretty long street here. What size is this street? 14 thick, or oh. 14 footer. 14 footer? Yeah, the bays are That's 14 That's a long thick. pull, man. You gotta be strong to pull that baby. Or have a good crew of muckers. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, good good, uh, good muckers will make it a lot easier. So you're the tamp man today, huh? Every day. You ever use uh, roller tamp? Yeah, but don't work as good, huh? No, that's for like driveway and stuff like that. It's got to be pretty tight. Yeah, if you're in California, maybe. Yeah, I haven't used them either. I used them in Vegas. That was about it. I used them in California. That's where I'm from. Oh, really? You're from the inline, Inland Empire? I'm from Monterey. Oh, Monterey, yeah. yeah. They want me to go back there, but I'm 16 and I'm like, dude, I'm just going to want to retire. <laughs> yeah, and you're not retiring there. It's too expensive to live over there, right? Uh, but I have all my kids there and everything. Oh, that's true. You know, and then I missed Vegas, actually, for a while. It took me a while to get used to that, you know, traffic well, jam traffic nightmare. And all that. Yeah, totally different. Well, see, what happened is a lot of people start coming down from San Jose, and you know, so it got really busy. Yeah. They're stop talking. Look at all these come alongs out. They got three guys with come alongs. And these guys on the uh, rod stick aren't they're not they're not having to pull a lot of concrete back. This concrete right here has fiber mesh in it. Right out of the plant. That's how you can get away with uh, not having uh, wire mesh in there. Uh, fiber mesh is an option on all the drawings out here. You can either go fiber mesh or you can go uh, you know, wire mesh. And fiber mesh is so much easier. And if you think about the wire mesh in general, trying to walk around on that with all these guys here, someone's going to fall most likely and get hung up on it. But when you get the fiber in there, I mean, it's in there. You got the reinforcement, but it, you know, you're just not a tripping hazard. Now, what's 
happening right here is they're just pulling a wet street off of that one in there. And he's still resting on top of the 2x12. I mean, notice the lumber out here too. This is that uh, pressed board. It's not just solid wood. It's all recycled wood and crushed and pressed. So it's, what it means is it's going to last a lot longer. Because this is a really dry climate. So if you have a uh, solid 2x12 laying around like this out, out here in this in this kind of environment, uh, they'll, they'll end up like a corkscrew in no time at all. But this uh, here just lays, just stays straight. It's really uh, tolerant of the, these kind of uh, weather conditions out here. It looks like they're running that three foot magnesium right now to start with. And then they might run that uh, seven foot full float back there uh, on the next pass possibly I'm not I'm not real sure we'll wait and find out though that's the size magnesium float that I happen to own also they got the same one this is a really good quality concrete mix too tell by how creamy it is it's rich hey do you happen to know the psi of this 35 yeah it looks like it so we got about either a 3000 or 3500 psi one or the other They're running two trucks into the uh, pump now. Check that out. That's the way to lay some concrete down in a hurry. How many yards can you do an hour at full speed? Uh, this pump will do right around 180. 180 an hour? Wow. That's really blowing it out, huh? Yeah, right slump, right service. Yeah. That's the trick. The service is always key, huh? So it's a mirrored foundation plan. So in other words, you use that plan, and you, you can flip it and, uh, for the different different model homes. So the floor plan really the same, but each one rotates. There's probably four plans in this entire track, and they're all reversed. So it breaks it up a little bit, but yeah. Here it is. But anyway, these little details will tell you the type of footing and what kind of reinforcement is. If you go to this page, that detail number, you can look at uh, what's required in this area. And then you got another detail over here, number two, for this area. So each footing will uh, maybe have a little. Yeah, now here's your interior. That's the number 48. Yeah, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier in this video, but the reason I'm out here with Azteca Concrete out of Fort Mojave, Arizona is because I happen to be getting my dog's ashes at the veterinarian. And right across the street was the office of Azteca. So I walked in. The owner was there, luckily, and I talked to him a little bit and found out he was doing a nice pour. So I came out here, and I just wanted to share the um, different techniques from different regions you know, uh, structural designs of concrete and the different ways you do it based on the soil conditions and, um, you know, just geographical location, basically. So it's a little different than we do it, um, that I'm doing it in California, as you can tell by, they got fiber mesh in the concrete here rather than any kind of reinforcement. The footing has a couple half inch bars. You're wet setting the bolts versus, you know, other technique that we do down in Cali. But I mean, when I initially started doing concrete in about the 80s um, in Cali, it was just like this. This is how it was done, actually. Other than we did have a vapor barrier. There's no vapor barrier here because, I mean, it's, you know, humidity is about 17% here, max. So you get a little bit more down by the coast, but... Uh, as far as your uh, reinforcement, this is how it used to be, you know, in the 80s in, in Cali. But things have changed a lot. All right, the concrete's back. 
We got another load, another 11 yard load. Oh, this one's a lot stiffer, it looks like. Uh, it's about the same slump. Looks like about a five inch. Five and a half at most. All right, looks like the quarterback's running the hose now. Quarterback option one. What's that? If it wasn't for Marcus, it wouldn't be possible. That's right. So that's Gabe on the bull float. Marcus is the lead man out here. Then you got Tommy as the owner. Tommy Ramirez. Aztec Concrete. The Tamp man right there, he's a Vietnam veteran. I talked to him quite a bit, and uh, he's got some good stories. I always like to hear those stories about that, um, conflicts over there. But, I mean, there's not many left that you can actually talk to that are still doing uh, doing concrete or in the construction business anymore. But, so, yeah, hopefully I can still be doing it at that age. All right, we're back over here. This is kind of where it begins. This is the setup and the excavation. They're, they're, this is the setup crew over here. You know, what we've done so far was the uh, the pouring team, the finishing team. But so, how long have you been uh, working for this particular company? Uh, just actually started. This is my fourth month. All right. On the job, yeah. And for interior footings, like what we really do is we do everything like. We basically dig all over the hand, you know. Clean it out yeah, after the back. Clean it out after the back. Well, the backhoe didn't dig this part at all, huh? No. So, like interiors, that's what we really do. We really oh yeah. On. Everything else is really pretty much already set. We just have to clean it up. Clean it up. Yeah, what they didn't, the, what fell back into the trench. Yeah. What fell back in after compacting and laying a uh, AV down. Ah. Uh. Other than that. Why is this area so big right here? What is it? What's going on here? This is a different uh, type of house. Like, uh, it's gonna be a big pad right yeah, there. Yeah, it's gonna be a big pad right here. It's gonna be a. It's like a. I don't know really how to say it. It's like a four a, by four. Yeah. Or something like that. Yeah, right in this area. Big, yeah. Right here, and they don't connect, so that's what's weird. Oh yeah, so, that is strange. Yeah. I don't know why. That little patch right there stays there. This side comes here. This side comes. Here just up to about right there and then there's another footing that comes just up to there about four feet or so do you do the layout do you lay out your footings yourself or no um we have a marked down as we get here to the job already oh it's already marked yeah, out it'll be marked down for us so we just come dig it out and then lay rebar oh nice how much how, how many uh how much longer do you think it'll take for this air hold this whole pad's ready to pour Today and tomorrow, we'll probably be finished by tomorrow. And that's rebar everything. Yeah, it's rebar and everything. So today we get after all the fittings are done, we set all the rebar in and we start getting it home and tied. Right here, right this trench you're working on is the back of the garage, I guess. Yes. So it's gonna be, oh, it's gonna look just like that side, yep. I guess, over there. Yes, Single sided form. Yeah. You do the setup or just the. Uh, uh, prep dig out just prep dig out and sometimes we like give a we'll, we'll give a helping hand yeah you know, if they need it or if some guys are not here today which we have one guy not here today right on nice weather out here right now huh yes sir all right nice talking to you you want to catch up my name man Marcus got it I 
All right, this is Gabe. He pretty much handled this entire slab with the machine. He had guys around the edges and stuff, but the whole center, he took care. He took care of the bowl floating, Fresnoing, a lot of the funny troweling behind the machine. Right now, he's running a five foot wide Fresno, and he threw some weights on here, which I had never seen this particular design. They're homemade, obviously. It's just, it just looks like some three quarter inch lengths of rebar all welded together with a little handle. You know, pretty simple and efficient, and it works. You know, instead of throwing the scrap rebars out in the trash or whatever, make some weights, basically. These are both of the machines, right, you're going to be using today? Yeah, three footer, four footer. That's your four footer right there. Eight horsepower Honda. Then over here, you got your three foot Honda. Okay, here's the brand, MQ, on that one. This other one, I don't know what name it is. Let me see. Oh, it's a Whiteman. Yep. Whiteman right here. All right, we're about three hours into this pour. Forms have already came off. That way we can they can run the power trowel right up to the edge. And also it's a little easier to trowel because the concrete shrinks a little on the edge. The form is usually a little high. This way when the form comes off, you can just run your trowel right, up, right off the edge. Once they power that thing, it'll, <laughs> it'll knock those marks out quick. Sometimes I have trouble taking my marks out. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm pretty heavy. How much do you weigh? 180? Uh, like, no, like 250. No, I'm just kidding. Now it's 208. Oh, really? Right, same as yeah. me. Yeah, like 208. That's about what I weigh. It's all in the stomach, you know? That's what it is <laughs> on me. Yeah. <laughs> I have two. Two, two three-footers. We got a couple three-footers too, though, we are. One of mine doesn't run at all. It hasn't ran in so long it won't start it. Uh -huh. The gas has got old. It needs the carburetor rebuild. and 20 minutes into this pour 3,000 psi with fiber mesh Okay, so they took the forms off and it makes it much easier when you're running the machine or you're um, just troweling along the edges because you don't have that uneven surface and you can trowel right over the edge. You can run your machine over the edge you won't get hung up or snag a form. So it's all timing about stripping these out and of course they're going to use a curing compound on the sides as well as on the surface when it's all said and done and this is about a second pass right here. He's on that first load still, right in that area. Of course, there's another couple loads in the footing, but as far as the slab goes, um, he, that's the first load approximately right there. So you had about two and a half loads on the surface 
and then you had about two in the hole on the footing. All right, the last load has arrived. This particular load has five yards on it, and all the rest had 11. We did uh, 10, 10, 11 yarders, and then this five yard cleanup. operating so far yeah smooth huh nice and smooth no hiccups no hiccups little hand work on that cold joint huh around those yeah, pipes around the pipe all right this is the vietnam vet right here i talked to him quite a bit got some good war stories out of him and stuff but he's got to be i figure you know being a vietnam vet he's got to be 75 years or older and i found out that his mom is actually over 100 she's still alive and uh, he's still doing comedy that's pretty amazing uh uh, hopefully I can still be doing it at that age. That would be nice. Uh, yeah, right at the door, huh? Right at the doorway, yeah, that way they got a nice entryway. Nice, nice. That's a nice touch. Nice and, nice and touch full, you know. And yep. Butter up the sides right here a little bit. And... That's it, bud. Yep, looking good. Thank you, sir. Don't get nervous now. Oh, I see the whip coming out now. Oh, look at that move. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you get concrete perfect when you do that. Gotta have, gotta have a little, little fun. That's for sure. To who? I'd like to get a shot out to Tommy Ramirez. Oh yeah, Great for sure. Guy and, uh, tell him that must be possible. So, uh, You're right. Thank you, boss. Oh, well, then you gotta keep the Odell's too. You gotta keep the Odell's on. Oh yeah, how you like those See? that glove? I like them. Yeah. Man, that was a whip. Four passes with the power trail. And now the whip's coming out. You did about four passes with that machine, huh? Something pretty serious, serious business. Are you going to whip the whole thing or is that good? No, no, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to I'm going to. Looks pretty good right no, now. I'm not going to whip good. the whole house. No, just, just right here. This thing looks pretty good. No, I got to go over all that. You just, that's just a hand trial you've converted, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cut the handle off. That's nice. So you can do that with any hand trial. You like the trial, put it on a pole.
hand in the machine and troweling with the other. That's when you know you've been doing it a little while. All fueled up? All fueled up, sir. Right on. Yeah. Well, that's finished product. Let's check out how many hours we're into this. We've got two foundation slabs down, over 100 yards, and we're at two o'clock. We started pouring it at eight. So yeah, eight hours. Six hours for the first pour. They're gonna be here another, I would say two to three hours on that second one. But this turned out nice. And now all that's left to do is put some curing compound and then saw cuts are gonna go in tomorrow. Let's check, take a look at the compound that we're using. It's the same compound I'm, I use actually, they got the same one right here it's a pink color see there's pink this is the one they're using water emulsion wax based curing compound and uh, they broke out the chalk line blue chalk that way it doesn't stain you use red it's never coming off look how flat that is with that line on there there was hardly no gap under that line Tell you what, you're within about right there, three eighths, a uh, quarter inch everywhere it looks like. Yeah, sure. There'll probably be another cut right here. I'm guessing, probably right off that corner, straight, straight to here, and probably off that same corner going the other direction as well. We'll see how they laid out. Right off of their corner there, all the way up. If you look that line, there's not much space anywhere underneath it. I just noticed. Maybe a quarter inch, but that is never you'll never feel it or see it. going off of every corner. Yeah, I got you. Then dump out the rest, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Water here for okay, thank you. All the trucks got cold water. So. Oh, nice. I hope so. Who loads them up? Uh, the guys at the yard. Oh. Well, whoever drives a poor truck normally, 
Oh, so, they load it up. Yeah, and we bury some certain people drive the pork truck certain days. So we make sure we get ice water, and then when they bring like the form trucks and everything, they get their own water on there. Oh, nice. So if they're thirsty, each truck has cold water. So. Okay, thanks. Hmm? Oh, you guys don't use the tip on those, huh? No. Well, that's nice. You never have to worry about it clogging. Yeah, it's the thing. Yeah, but these always clog on that. Yeah. You know, there's a the sprayer I've been using. It's a backpack with a gas engine on it. Oh yeah. Tomahawk makes it, and it it'll blow all the way across the slab. Will you fire that up? Oh yeah. And you have a backpack. Nice. It carries about seven gallons, but I only put about two gallons. Yeah, right. So too it's heavy. So heavy. Yeah, right. That thing will shoot it. Oh, it's a little two cycle engine about that big. <laughs> that's tight. And it is. That's nice. It blows that. clogs right Talk out. That. Yeah, this curing compound's real important on these big slabs, huh? Yeah. You ever not put it on and then come back um, the next day and crack it up? The only times that we don't put it on is, um, well, not necessarily we don't put it on, but like we'll come back and we'll cut it the same day. Oh, like then you don't summer. need it, yeah. Yeah, and then there's no really reason for it because we're already cut. We're already cut yeah, you, you already know? got it cut. Yeah, so. That's true. That's probably the only time. Other than that, you know, we try to soak it, you know, put a good layer on it, not just piss on it. You know? Yeah, that is, yeah, you're putting it on there heavy for sure. All right, that about wraps up this video. They'll come back tomorrow morning and saw cut this up. That curing compound will cure it out nice and slow so it's optimized strength. and doesn't shrink up too fast. Anyway, thanks for watching this Christmas special one hour long. Have a good one and Merry Christmas.